what are we doing to try to get people to, you know, feel better about our election process? And one of the things that this next gentleman is doing, he's holding hearings on it. Uh, you know, our 1937 election law, you know, it went back that far. Yeah. They're diving deeper into it and uh, and how it's how our elections are being conducted, the concerns that we have. Uh, Seth Grove is uh, the a, a chairman, by the way, of the House State Government Committee. He's also a state representative, re- representative from the 196th Legislative District locally here. And he joins us this morning to tell us about what they're doing because there are very specific dates and very specific topics they're using. Good morning, Seth. Uh, Happy New Year to you. We haven't talked to you yet this year, but great to have you on the show. Yeah, Gary, Happy New Year. Great to be on. And uh, our our first hearing was yesterday, and the administration doesn't want to have any more hearings. I'm kind of shocked, right? (laughs) Yeah. They're like, hey, we have this advisory committee that's going on, so we don't really need to do hearings anymore, do we? Well, wait a um, second. So advisory, into, yeah. advisory committee set up by whom? Is that an executive advisory committee? Yeah, but, uh, we we pass it in in into law, and it's run by the administration. So, oh, you know, it, it's cool though, Gary, because the administration has something going on. So we don't need legislative oversight. Everything's good, right? Do I detect a little note of sarcasm there? Uh, anyway, lots now of, you, lots of I was I was looking at your schedule. Yesterday was going to be the opening hearing, and then this is going to go all the way up to April 22nd, about every week, uh, as I as I yep. read it here. Uh, and so why wouldn't they not want to work together with you, uh, you know, in, in hearing all these different things? And it's laid out pretty well. I'm looking, I'm looking down this line here. Just kind of tell people a little bit about the different areas that you're trying to look at here and, uh, and maybe review in terms of, I, I think the... We, we want to get everybody feeling good about the election system again, don't mm-hmm. we? I mean, that's one of our basic rights that we have here as Americans and as Pennsylvanians. Right. So heading into this, um, I, I thought, how's, how's the best way to, to go after our election law um, that, that, that really drives home about getting into it? Because you can't do one hearing on the election law because there's too many, too many topics, right? So we thought, number Absolutely. one, a, a big issue this election was the, the guidance that the Department of State gave out. So that was this first hearing. And then the next one is the SURE system, which the administration is actually going to update uh, over this next year. Um, counties have had issues with it. There's been um, uh, And for a, people that aren't, uh, people audit, aren't up on that, uh, Seth, tell them what the SURE system is, S-U-R-E. Yeah, so it is, it is the computer system that the Department of State operates right. to kind of manage data collection uh, particularly voter registration in the Commonwealth. And we do verify that they did give access to that to rock the vote um, through, our, through our right to know request. So we do know that they, but well, we don't know the extent of, of that. And we're going to, we will follow up on, on that uh, during the next hearing. Um, so it's very important. All the, all the, all the counties are connected into that. Um, so that's kind of, and, and that's important because that sets the election books. So when you go right. in to vote, that kind of establishes who, who can and can't vote on election day. So it's very, very important. The next one is audit. So um, counties were required to do a 2% recount, basically. Um, that has been completed. Um, they're currently finishing up a risk-limiting audit in 64 counties. So we're going to follow up on those. What were the outcomes okay. of those audits, which I think is right. very important, right? And then we get into the nuts of bolts. So we're going to go through step-by-step step of how elections are done in Pennsylvania, starting with voter registration, and ending with election day operations to include um, certification of machines, how machines operated, and we requested Dominion to come in and do a live demonstration step okay. by step of, of an election machine. Um, you know how how co- counties have to interact with the Department of State, the whole nine yards. So that that's a huge bulk of of the overall hearing, which which I think is a good thing to go step by step because you know m- most voters that go in and vote, they don't see all that all the back office stuff. No, that no, you don't. Right? So, and then we get into kind of more policy stuff. We get into election integrity. Uh, we get into what other states do. Uh, how did how did Florida 20 years ago go from an ep- epic mess to this year flawless? Yeah. Like having those conversations will inform us moving forward. It seemed like um, a good model kind of to follow. Yeah, yeah. Right. I was down right. there, by um, the way, doing my show at that time. Watching one Saturday night, my my daughter and I sat there in front of those guys, watching them holding those things up with a hanging chat. So I can tell you, uh, they have a much better system now than they had then. Because my daughter right. leaned over to me, Seth, and she said, "Dad, 
we're sitting here in the middle of history, and I, and I leaned back over to her. I said, Susie, uh, if we were doing this on any other Saturday night, it would be the most boring Saturday night ever, wouldn't it? And, you know, we, but that, that's kind of how we looked at it. But they've, yeah. they've improved a little bit since then. But go ahead. I just wanted to interject that. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty cool. Your daughter was there living that, too. I mean, that's a, yeah. that's a lifelong story. I was there with the hanging chads. Um, the hanging chads. So, yeah, hanging chads. So that's, that's kind of the, the premise behind it. Um, you know, I, I think this, this hearing was, was really interesting because, you know, election guidance is so innocuous. Like, who, who, who's ever heard of election guidance prior to 2020, right? Right. Um, the 67 election directors and stuff. What is it? Uh, basically, what we got from the secretary was it was basically her, her opinion. Like, every, every question we asked around what election guidance is, it's, well, I, I, I thought the counties needed more direction on that. And the chairman of the House State Government Committee, Seth Grove, from our local 196th uh, legislative district with us. You know, Seth, one of the things that I hate in politics, uh, and I think you know this, you and I have talked over the years, and I, I have a sense that you do, too. There's this idea that we have a self-fulfilling prophecy. We set up a committee to go in and fulfill that self-fulfilling prophecy and say, see, they cheated in the election. I'm more of a guy that's in favor of good policy and saying, okay, what are the components of the election? Let's, let's you know, look under the hood, see how they're working, uh, whether it's Republicans or Democrats, and let's see if we can make it a better, more trusted piece of policy work. Uh, where are you on this right now? Because I know there are a lot of politicians out there who would take advantage of this if they could. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I enjoy the policy aspect of stuff. Um, we're, we're, we're doing the deep dive and we set up the hearings to, to, to evaluate the entire election law. And as you stated, the base law is from 1937. In 16 years, it's going to be 100 <laughs> years old. Right. Um, the first major changes we made were last session. So, you know, there's a couple things. Number one, with, and, and it's something that frustrates me about the General Assembly is kind of oversight. You know, how, how have agencies um, administered our laws? And two, after you pass something, doing a follow-up, how is it working? Um, and that's something I definitely want to change with the committee this year to do to, to follow up. Like, we passed the laws. How did they work? We, we want answers, so if we have to do any corrections moving forward. Two, you know, out of the entire hearing, like, out of all the issues that happened in 2020, if you look at the hearing schedule, it is, it is grounded in looking a comprehensive review of the entire election law. Yeah, I'm looking so at it. It looks pretty good, thing, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah it needs, the entire thing needs looked at. Whether, whether there were issues that propped up in the last election or not, we need to have conversations about all this stuff. And I, I do believe we need global reform on the, on the entire process moving forward. Um, it needs updated. Do you know part of our statute requires the counties to give each polling place a lantern? No, I did not know that. You have to give each one yeah, a lantern, still, huh? Yeah. yeah still have you been doing that? It doesn't happen. No, no. <laughs> right. it, it doesn't right. happen because it's, it's, it's old, antiquated language. That you haven't been given them extra feed for the horses either, have you? Right. We need, we need uh, actually in Lancaster, they, they actually might need a hitch post. But uh, right, okay. I'm not sure too yeah. much yeah. in Lancaster. Yeah. So it, it is a fundamental review. It is ensuring that we have the, 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 the proper policies in place to, to kind of mitigate, um, you know, the, the Department of State guidance um, to make sure that we have all the integrity provisions in there um, and, and making sure that the, the law is clear so there's no ambiguity so someone can do their own interpretation and, and can still construe it to something different. You know, there were two um, dates. There were two dates on there, and, and you had a list of from January twenty first to April twenty second every week. But two dates that jumped out at me: March fourth, the mail in and absentee ballots. I would love to hear the testimony on that one, uh, just to hear you know hear what what that came out of that. And then uh, March twenty fifth, the ele- election integrity policies. Those are all things that I think people would want to hear. What you've done is you've taken this and you've kind of broken it all down. I, I guess I want to come back to something here because we only have about a minute and a half left in the segment here, Seth. But what, is there any chance of getting the administration back to the table on this? I mean, do they see this as purely political? Uh, because it looks like it does. You know, we'd all like to see this aired out a little bit and, and talked about. So we all have more confidence. At least I'm, maybe, that's, maybe I'm looking at it purely in a policy sense. But I'd like to have more confidence. And if there's a way of making our voting better, and I think for a lot of people they didn't realize that this law – was 1937 then maybe it needs a little bit of an overhaul or at least a good solid looking at is there any way of getting him back to the table about a minute left your final thoughts 
Yeah, they they have committed to to bring in their technical experts, which I wanted. I, I don't I don't need the secretary there at every hearing. They're 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 mostly political hacks anyway. Um, but to, to have to have their technical experts to help advise the committee and answer questions on, on the technical aspects. Uh, Jonathan Marks, who testified, he's the deputy secretary. Uh, that's all we really need because because uh, he's he's um, he's been with the department for a long time in many okay. functions and has a clear understanding of that. Um, and two, um, you know, the administration, even during testimony yesterday, the secretary, they want changes um, every day. Like all the election laws come to my committee uh, every day. I see Democrats requesting election law changes, my colleagues. So it, it is, I think, the top priority, the top priority of the county. Number one issue for county government is election mm-hmm. law changes because they have to deal with with the administration of it. So uh, it, it is it is basically a universal fact. Um, that we have to do election law changes this year because it's requested not only yeah. by the electorate, uh, but by the by the administration uh, and, and even the Democrats. And Democrats and Republicans. And by the way, I saw where people can go to your website to see the hearings if they're going to go on. Mm-hmm. Rep, repgrove.com. That's capital R-E-P, G-R-O-V-E. That's capital G, by the way, dot mm-hmm. com. Is that correct? That's correct. And, Gary, also, we're going to probably be releasing shortly um, public comment, too. So if you want to if you want to do written testimony okay. uh, to the committee, uh, we're accepting that from the public as well, because obviously we can't we can't have, you know, 50 hour hearings over nine days on one topic. Uh, but we want as much input from anybody and everyone as possible. So we, oh, you we mean be, you mean uh, you mean the government, you know, the people being the government. That, that, right. this, this is kind of refreshing. So. Hey, uh, right. repgrove.com. Uh, Seth, appreciate you taking the time with us this morning. Uh, I hope all this comes to fruition because I think, it, it, you know, it's a good, uh, like I said, opening up the hood, seeing what's underneath, and maybe uh, making the motor a little bit better in the long run. It can run a little bit more efficiently uh, or maybe eliminate some things that don't need to be there anymore that were there in 37, don't need to be there now in 21. Uh, Seth Grove with us here this morning. Seth, always good talking to you, my friend. Thanks so much. You too, Gary. Bye.